and welcome to week 8 of the sedimentology course here at Department of Geology UM. This week is e-learning week, so I will try to test the feasibility of conducting online classes for this course. We are still on the topic of coastal depositional environments, and we'll look in detail at coastlines dominated by wave processes. Last week, we talked about how coastal depositional environments can be classified based on the relative strength of the three main physical processes affecting sediment transport and deposition along the coast, including the, uh, which are river flow, tidal currents, and waves. These three processes form end member points on the Dalrymple et al. ternary diagram. And depending on the dominant processes, you get different deposition environments. For example, you get a river-dominated delta. If it's a tide-dominated environment, you get tidal flats. If it's a wave-dominated environment, you get beach strand plains. Or if you have a complex mix of river, wave, and tidal processes, you get estuaries. This second diagram, this is a Boyd et al.'s diagram, it shows a more visual representation of the different coastal depth environments that develop due to the relative strength of river, wave, and tide power. In this diagram, tides become stronger as you go as you move towards the left, while waves become stronger as you move as you move towards the right. Note that the different strengths of river, wave, or tide energy produces differently shaped environments with different fasci dis distributions. This is a very important observation and this concept is applied in many different fields including hydrocarbon exploration, mineral exploitation, and also environmental management. So let's say you have a river dominated um, setting, you tend to get low bait uh, deltas. If you are a wave dominated setting, you tend to develop straight beach strand planes, and so on. Note also that the diagram separates environments that are developed along transgressive courses and regressive courses. And some uh, environments are restricted to certain settings, such as estuaries, which are strictly transgressive, while deltas proper are strictly regressive and progradational. Now, going back to today's topic, wave-dominated coastal depositional environments, which are also known as beach strand plains. A good example of a beach strand plain system is the coast of Nayarit in Mexico, shown here in aerial map view. The sediment source of beach strand plain systems is mainly from rivers. However, rivers here are very weak compared to the strong uh, river input associated with fluvial dominated deltas. Notice you have two small rivers here supplying sediment to the sea of the coast of Nayarit. Because of the weak river input, the river mouths do not form low bait deltas. Sediment laid down at the river mouths in a wave dominated setting is rapidly reworked by the stronger waves. A major process that reworks beach sediment is what is called longshore transport. You have looked at longshore transport in the assigned video on YouTube, A River of Sand. Longshore transport is when waves approach the, the shoreline at an angle, resulting in net transport of the sand parallel to the coastline. Beaches are very sandy due to the high energy wave dominated environment. However, protected areas behind the beach can be fine grained as the sediments are not touched by the approaching waves from the sea. So, in summary, wave-dominated systems tend to have laterally extensive 
straight, narrow shorelines due to longshore transport that contain few small rivers. An example closer to home of a wave-dominated environment is the eastern coast of Peninsular Malaysia, the coast of Kelantan to Terengganu, where you have strong waves associated with the South China Sea. Here, you also see a sandy beach forming a narrow, straight, elongated coast. However, note that you also have a fluvial-dominated delta in the northwestern point of the map. This is the Kelantan Delta, and here it is a fluvial-dominated environment, and notice the strong river input coming from the Kelantan River. In past lectures, we've already covered how flow processes can produce different bed forms depending on the flow velocity and also the grain size. And waves can form structures such as symmetrical ripples and also hummocky cross stratification. This is important as we move on to the next topic, the fasci's composition and fasci's distribution in wave dominated depositional environments. We've also learned that waves form oscillatory flow and the water moves in circular cells due to wave propagation. However, the oscillatory motion becomes weaker at greater depths due to friction until you reach a certain depth where the water no longer is affected by waves. This depth is called the wave base. Below the wave base, any sediment at the sea bottom will not be moved by the waves. You have to remember, the wave base is not a stationary depth. It can also form at greater depths if the waves are larger, for example, during storms. So you get a deeper storm wave base versus the much shallower normal condition fair weather wave base. The interaction between landward approaching waves and sediment along the coast results in a characteristic profile of a wave-dominated depositional system called a beach shore face profile. Generally, a beach shore face profile has a concave upward geometry which steepens shoreward. A profile can be divided into several zones. The offshore part is below mean wave base and is almost flat. Offshore deposits are generally muddy and strongly bioturbated. The shore face is the subtidal zone above mean fair weather wave base. It is sandy and has a gentle slope gradient. The beach is the intertidal to supratidal zone. It is also sandy and can be divided into a steep intertidal foreshore facing the, facing the sea and a flat supratidal backshore. The distinct shape of a beach shore face profile is caused by the propagation of waves into shallower waters. This process is also known as wave shoaling. In the open sea, uh, W the, w the water moves in relatively complete circular motions. As the waves move into shallower water, the waves start to crowd together. Further landward, the oscillatory flow is deformed and wave height increases. Eventually, the waves become too high and too steep and eventually collapse or break. In summary, in the zone of wave shoaling, waves become modified as they propagate into shallower water. Velocity and wavelength decreases. Oscillatory flow with perfect circular motion is deformed into open elliptical movement, and you start to have an asymmetrical net landward moving flow. 
Symmetrical ripples in the deeper parts are gradually replaced landward by asymmetrical current ripples and associated dunes. Landward of the wave shoaling zone is the breaker zone in the upper shore face to foreshore part. Here, waves steepen as they approach the shoreline. Eventually, they become too steep and break, spilling water landward. This results in temporary suspension of fine sand and deposition of coarser grains. The swash zone associated with the beach is dominated by landward and seaward directed high velocity flow or swash and backwash, which produces plane beds and associated plane parallel lamination. Example of a swash zone. This is the back shore of Pantai Pasir Tengkora in Langkawi. Now, during fair wonder conditions associated with a modern day wave dominated shoreline, you can safely assume that you will have deposits grading landward from bi-intubated mud of the offshore into rippled and cross-bedded sand and plain beds of the shore face and beach. However, many shorelines throughout the whole world are affected by storms. And storms can form storm deposits and destroy older fair weather deposits. Thus, in many ancient examples throughout the whole world, shorefish deposits are completely dominated by hummocky cross stratification because of the poor preservation potential of fair weather generated deposits. Let's have a look in detail at the fasces present in wave dominated depositional environments. Offshore deposit deposits are characterized by thick bioturbated shale or mudstone. This is because of the low energy setting below wave base. This kind of low energy quiet habitat is also favored by many organisms which explains a high degree of bioturbation in these deposits. However, Occasional storm deposits can also be deposited in the offshore region, represented by thin layers of very fine grain sandstone displaying graded bedding, humgy cross stratification, and plain parallel lamination. The shore face is a high energy environment located above wave base. It is characterized by sandy fasces, including hummocky cross-stratified sandstone associated with storm deposition, and also current-generated fasces such as plain beds and cross-bedded sandstone. Beach deposits are dominated by plain parallel lamination produced by wave swash and backwash with associated cross beds formed by migrating ridges and runnels. Now that we have a good understanding of the processes operating on a wave dominated coast and their resultant deposits, we can construct a depositional model for a beach strand plane system. The combination of low river input, wave dominance, and longshore transport results in a relatively straight sandy shoreline. The process of wave shoaling produces a distinct concave upward beach shore face profile. Bioturbated shale is dominant in the offshore part below wave base, while the shore face region above wave base is sand dominated. Shore face fasces grade landward from hummocky cross stratification of the lower shore face into cross beds and plain beds 
the upper shore face and beach. Beach strand plane systems are depositional systems, meaning that sediment is built up. Therefore, they are also regressive in nature, with the shoreline moving further and further seaward with time as sediment is accreted. Thus, beach shore face successions can be recognized in the ancient rock record by the shallowing upward progradational succession, which in this case also coarsens upward. The fasces also show a shallowing upward trend from basal muddy biotubated fasces of the offshore, which grades upward into hummocky cross stratification and cross bedded sandstones of the shore face, which is then capped by plain parallel laminated sandstones of the beach environment. 